Hello. <coughs> <coughs> Hello, I'm the Artsmith, and today I'm bringing you some Pokemon content. As I've been working on the animatic for the last Fire Sprite pilot, which is coming on awesome by the way, if you haven't yet, check out its proof of concept, I found that designing some hypothetical monsters was a fantastic way to avoid burnout. I've always admired the designs in Pokemon, but I didn't connect with it as much as I did with brands like Digimon as a kid. My main exposure to Pokemon was watching reruns of the anime before school, and that kids who I deemed cool thought it was weird, so I kind of kept my distance. I played a couple of the games, Black and White and X and Y, but the first Pokemon game I actually finished was Sword and Shield, and by this time I wasn't an insecure kid anymore, so I was able to fully buy into the idea. If I were to pick a favorite, it would definitely be Noivern, <laughs> but I've kind of got a bias towards fossil Pokemon and dragon types, most likely due to my obsession with dinosaurs as a kid. That's why, for my hypothetical region, I'm being super self-indulgent and making it a dino region. Now, that doesn't mean every mon I design is going to be a dinosaur, but I can promise that a majority of them will be. At the very least, I want the starters to be prehistoric. I've got an entire set of starters to show you guys, but today I'll be going through my design process for the grass starters. So to avoid drawing this out any longer, let's get into it. Just like any strong set of starters, I wanted to give all three of them a unifying theme. But I wanted something stronger than just, they're all dinosaurs. I also wanted my unifying theme to be much more personal than some of the mainline starter Pokemon, like circus performers and English stereotypes. No, the glue that binds these designs together is that they choose you. In the grass starter's case, it literally sticks to you. With its thorns. I named this little buddy Cactops, combining Cactus and Triceratops. Or Protoceratops in this case. Triceratops is my favorite dinosaur, so of course I would have to make a starter for it. Cactops was hands down the easiest of the three starters to conceptualize. I mean, it's a Triceratops and a Cactus. It's a match made in heaven. I'm really surprised that there isn't already a Pokemon like this. I wanted to make it really difficult for you guys to choose which starter you would want to go on your journey with. There's always a fan favorite starter leaving the other two stuck in its shadow. I feel like I imbued all of these starters with the same amount of love, so I really hope it's a difficult choice. Cactops, the bud Pokemon. Because of the spikes covering the majority of Cactops' body, most trainers do not find themselves choosing this Pokemon. Instead, when it finds commonality with a human, a wild Cactops will stick to them until they either accept it or find a professor to help remove it. However, those who give Cactops the chance have come to appreciate its jovial and amiable personality. It is intensely loyal and often asks for hugs, much to its trainer's dismay. I don't know about you, but I feel like the middle stages don't receive as much love as the first and final forms do. I don't think that's controversial. We all know that, right? They're often the weird puberty phase conceptualized, the transition from cute to badass. I wanted to make sure that my middle stages had just as much thought put into them as the others. Floris is a combination of a blooming cactus flower and a centrosaurus. It's much more aggressive than Cactops and has grown a horn on its snout. I like to use these middle stages to sort of hint at the second typing for the final evolution. So I ask you, what do you think the final form's second typing will be? Oh, on another note, how did you like the shiny for Cactops? I want the grind to get a shiny Pokemon to feel 100% worth it, so I put way too much time into perfecting these shiny forms. For Cactops' line, I wanted to highlight another color that Cactus Blossoms can appear as. What do you think? Would you grind for it? Floris, the blooming Pokemon. The petals in this Pokemon's blooming frill give off an otherworldly fragrance that they use to charm their opponents. They often lash out at anything they perceive as a threat to them, making them great for gym battles, but not so welcome in residential zones. Floris can also become jealous of the other Pokemon on its team. However, with some training and patience, they will bloom into something beautiful. Some of you might be wondering, why are you making a Triceratops Pokemon? It's already been done. That being Shieldon, or who I like to call Sheldon, and Bastiodon. Oh, Bastiodon. Yeah, I hate it. I know I said I like the fossil Pokemon, but this is the one exception. I mean, just look at it. Look at how they massacred my boy. 
If this is your favorite Pokemon, please don't think I'm bashing you personally. I'm just some random guy on the internet. J just ignore me and go off and enjoy your Sheldon. But anyway, back on topic. The main inspiration for this whole line actually came from a recent hypothesis for the Triceratops' frill. That being, its frill wasn't used as a shield, but as a means of display for mating. As soon as I learned this, I couldn't get the idea of a Triceratops with a flower frill out of my head. I decided on Fairy for the second typing because I wanted to give Fairy a shot at being badass, so I gave it a bright pink frill to show that even beauty can instill fear. Sawaradon, the cactus flower Pokemon. After coming into full bloom, Sawaradon primarily uses its flowery frill for presentation and to attract a mate. It also serves as an effective means of intimidation. Sawaradon is a docile creature, fully resonant with its spiritual side. However, they are prepared to unleash their devastating might if it means protecting their trainer. Bonds formed with this Pokemon are unbreakable and profoundly beautiful. So what do you think? If you chose Cactops as your starter, are you pleased with its final form? I had a lot of fun coming up with these designs and sort of writing a character arc for a Pokemon as it evolves. I keep it up with the other two starters as well. We start with a little Mon that desperately wants to find companionship, but is rarely if ever chosen because of certain traits it possesses. Then we see how these traits create an unhealthy attachment style with their trainer. Then finally, we see the Pokemon fully matured and at peace with who it is. Let me know if this is something you would like to see more of. And check back soon for the fire and water starters. This has been the Artsmith, and thank you for coming to the Forge.